and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund Infowars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Well, as promised, the InfoWars Nightly News continues its groundbreaking coverage of the U.S. border collapse. InfoWars News Director Rob Dew and Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs have just learned that the Border Patrol plans to house illegal immigrants at a New Mexico training academy. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Artesian, New Mexico, that's actually yeah. where the Border Patrol Academy is, and they want to house some of these people at the, at the Border Patrol Academy while they're awaiting processing. Well, well that takes away from training, then, I, I assume, having to, because now you have to pull people away here at Cadre, I, I assume, now you've got to have people watching them as well, right. taking care of them, babysitting. I, I imagine it's, it's had a, a pretty big impact on, on training, but, it, it, I mean, it, the agents that are there for training, are, are not, I mean, they've not yet taken the oath. So yeah. they have no enforcement authority. So it, that burden is gonna be on, on the staff at the academy. And I, I can't imagine that being the training possible. overall, yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, the, obviously the best, best case scenario is that it's our agents out in the field trying to secure the border. Um, with that said, if our agents are otherwise tied up and we're so restricted by processing and by by budget issues uh, we we want border security and if we need help doing that and DPS is called upon to do it you know I, I in the short term I, I don't know that there's another answer you know there's been talk of calling out the National Guard and I would be all for that depending on what their role would be because again we're talking about um, the National Guard who has no arrest authority and believe me, I'm grateful for our troops and, and our veterans, very much so. Uh, but if we could get the National Guard to help us in more of a support role so our agents could be freed up to get out there and do a, a more yeah, of an enforcement role, and then, then yeah, absolutely, let's do it. But more importantly than, than that, I think, we need the Border Patrol to be 100% staffed. And right now we're not 100% staffed. And that's because, like I explained earlier, our guys are being pulled out of the field because of budget issues. Now we just had yesterday our pay reform bill went through markup in the Senate. So we're hopeful that, that the Senate will, will push that and get that through because that will effectively put 1,500 more agents back out in the field where they should be and it will be at less cost to the taxpayer. So that's something that needs to happen and it needs to happen quick. But that that's one of the first best steps we can take. Combined with that, we also need to make sure that these people are not just caught and released. Otherwise, the, the flow is going to continue. Well, this illegal invasion of the recent flood of illegal immigrants is absolutely destroying small town America. A once prosperous Texas town is now drowning in debt due to the swarm of illegal immigrants destroying property, spreading disease, and filling up mass graves on the taxpayer's dime. Infowars reporter John Bound speaks with Falfurious Texas Judge Raul Ramirez about the red level warning signs for Main Street America. We are here at the county seat of Falfurious, Texas, a small town whose success is largely due to the developer and pioneer Edward Cunningham Lassiter who in 1893 owned one of the largest ranches in Texas 
at 350,000 acres. As the San Antonio and Aransas Pass Railway expanded south to his ranch in 1904, Lassiter founded Falfurius, an Apache word meaning the land of heart's delight, possibly due to the sweet butter creamery Lassiter developed in 1909. Or perhaps it refers to filfarius, Mexican slang for dirty and untidy. One thing is for certain, both meanings apply here as the county and local ranchers struggle to bankroll, defend their lives, and bury the bodies of the rising tide of illegals crossing their land every day. It was the loss of oil and gas revenue compounded by the amount that we spent. And that, that figure is de dealing with autopsies, it's dealing with wear and tear of the vehicles, the sheriff department, the JPs, the magistrates, the death certificates, all the, the paperwork that's entailed, getting out to these areas that are very, very remote. I personally have been taken to pronounce a body when the, police, the sheriff officer with me says, oh, there went the transmission. And we had to call a record to come get us. Thank God for Border Patrol. They were able to take us to where uh, the immigrant was. And a lot of these immigrants are dying of dehydration. Is that the main cause? Uh, we refer to them as the elements. You know, it's compounded by the 100 plus weather degrees out there, rattlesnake bites. And a lot of them we order autopsies because we don't know uh, what was the cause of death. We now do autopsies on everybody and DNA on everybody. As far as the, uh, the immigrants from other parts of the world, can you speak on that at all, what your experience, what you've seen from, say, uh, China, India, Russia, possibly? Uh, we have reports from the Sheriff's Department. They can confirm that they've uh, apprehended people from over there, and they've also found people. But uh, the Sheriff's Department is very aware of that they are here, and they're coming in. Has violence increased in the past few years as a result of the aggressive increase in immigrants? Yes, definitely. Matter of fact, uh, uh, I just got a report a couple of days ago of a local rancher that uh, they broke into his ranch. And, uh, and we are getting more and more reports of either agents that are being accosted or uh, deputies that are, are having to, uh, finding resistance, you know, from these individuals. Uh, they're young, they're 30 and under. A lot of them. Uh, year to date right now, I believe we have 33. And we're about to go into July and August, you know. If you're familiar with Brooks County, we've got 944 square miles. And it's very, very rough terrain. And of course, being from South Texas, anybody that knows about rattlesnakes, we got some big ones. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's very, very difficult because the anti-venom is out of Corpus Christi. Mm -hmm. And that means that we'd have to get a helicopter down here and try to get them within that golden hour so we could save their body. Wow, the cost of that must be staggering. Of course, and well, that incurs on, on the county. And that's why all these expenses, you know, uh, we don't budget for. And we've had to, and the law says we have to pay for them. And ha have you asked for grants from the federal government? We have gotten nothing from the federal government. Uh, Governor Perry's office uh, last year stepped up to the plate and they helped us with $150,000 to the sheriff. We were in Austin, Texas this week and they're going to help us with another 150000 That's to defray a lot of the costs that the sheriff department has. There was a boom time with the gas and oil and the creamery. In 2007 when I took office, our taxable value was $1 million, $1 billion, $93 million. Last year was 541 million. We've lost more than 60% of our oil and gas. So that, that makes, you know, and we live by oil and gas. In 1959, we were the only one in South Texas that had an all-concrete stadium. Mm -hmm. We had four dealerships and we had a hospital. Are you aware of the administration of Obama, how they're professing to the Central American countries that if you come across the border and proclaim that you're a dreamer, uh, especially these younger kids that are coming across, that you will receive amnesty. Uh, I think that you can't uh, make the rules just to, uh, to apply them. If you're going to be fair, let's be fair to everybody. You know, if you're going to allow people to come in, you should have standards, you should have a program in play that would allow them to enter the country legally, not illegally. Are you aware of the exploding swine flu now in San Antonio in this area? What's your health and human services doing to take care of that? Well, we've been there before. A couple of years ago, the H1N1 it was here and we were prepared. Uh, we've got a wonderful medical exam in the valley that, that keeps us abreast and, and we always take a proactive approach. We've got a lot of illegal activity by human smuggling 
and we've got, uh, it, it is a problem. The problem that we, we've got to contain is that we just don't want people dying in our county. And so we're trying to do everything humanly possible to stop it. We've got uh, a good friend of mine that goes out and puts water stations at the ranches, so at least they can have water. How effective has the Border Patrol and Homeland Security been in your county? We have a wonderful presence of Border Patrol. They do a great job of drug apprehension. You know, that, that's what their Brooks County is number one in the nation for. The only bad part about it, we're not a border county, so we don't qualify for any federal assistance. And so I've, I've made the scenario many times, including to the governor's office on Tuesday, that if you've got a scenario where Border Patrol agents are following somebody and they get bit by a rattlesnake, they'll take him to the hospital, they'll put agents there to, to monitor him, they'll foot the bill. But an immigrant dies, call Brooks County. Right. Uh, we were just in Brownsville and McAllen last week, and we discovered that the Border Patrol was paying uh, via a credit card for uh, illegals that had come in, m mainly women with children, babies. McAllen, Texas is yeah. tapping their resources. It might have taken effect on their money, on their budget, because you don't budget for stuff like that. I mean, you can budget some, but at some point, you didn't see or foresee the amount of immigrants coming over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're, they're paying for bus tickets, they're generating power for them, they're putting up tents, they're feeding them. Wouldn't you say that's exploitation at a high level? I mean, that's crazy. If I did something like that, they'd want to put me in jail. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing what the federal government's getting away with. My God. Well, you've enlightened me to a lot of things that, you know, for the last week, I've been inundated with the mass graves and, uh, and so the, it, I, I kind of now got to get back to it and focus on everything else, but when, and it's going to get crazy before it gets better, it's going to get crazy. Yeah, I'm sure glad you lend it here and, and let everybody know of what's going in Brooks County because, you know, uh, my heart goes out to, this, to McAllen and the County of Hidalgo because, you know, they, they've got a lot on their plate. Uh, we've had it, you know, like I said, for 65 months and we wouldn't want to bestow on anybody else. So. And now from that amazing interview with Judge Ramirez here in Brooks County, Texas, we take you to the mass dumping ground here at the Sacred Heart Burial Park. Who's next? What town is next to take the brunt of the illegal activity being spread by the federal government into the United States? Is it your town? From Falfurious, Texas, I'm John Bound for InfoWars Nightly News. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return next week, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed weekend. We'll see you back right here on Monday. Good night. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.